Welcome in to Racing to Win, the twice weekly preview show for racing in Hong Kong. The focus this week is going to be Sha Tin on Sunday, but before we look at the meeting upcoming this weekend, we've got a very special guest joining us on the show. Blue Marlin's in front though, he's a length clear. They're not going to get the fish. Blue Marlin's going to be too good. M Unicorn rounding them up quickly out wider. He's put pay to them in a flash. M Unicorn too strong. It is Blue Marlin in front by a length and a half over Outgate. Let's do it and Golden Artie and Blue Marlin wins again. Harry Bentley, welcome in to Racing to Win. Thanks for joining us on the show this week. We've just seen in your montage there, you've got Blue Marlin absolutely flying. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, he's a horse that's going from strength to strength at the moment. Um, yeah, he, he's certainly on the up and uh, hopefully there's a few more good days to come. We'll talk to uh, Harry Moore shortly because the boys are here. Need to introduce them, Paul Lally and Tom Wood. And Tom, apart from Harry having rides on Sunday, what else can we look forward to? We've got a couple of class uh, two races, uh, Mark, two. We'll look forward to in terms of those ones on the all-weather. Um, Majestic Star going around to there. But Youthful Deal, the, the highlight act in that race, he's back on the all-weather. He's won four in total on the all-weather. And the other one, we've got um, the Golden Scenery, Find My Love and Dancing Code, who was most impressive, and he steps up to 1,400. And Paul, what about jackpot punters? Anything to look forward to? Yeah, a couple of good ones actually. The triple trio, 7.4 million going to that, so that should get up to over the 13 million mark. And the first double trio as well, there's a little jackpot going into that, so that should get over the 3 million mark as well. So, so a couple of good jackpots, quite an even card I thought on uh, Sunday. All right, we'll get the boys to ask Harry some questions along the way also. First question though, uh, Harry, four winners for the season from 31 rides. You happy with how things ticking along early? Yeah, I'm really happy with uh, the start I've made. Um, getting a winner on the first day was great and naturally helps your momentum a little bit. And um, I'm pleased to have bagged a, a couple of winners on horses that look like they're on the up and um, can hopefully be winning again soon. You rode 25 winners last season. Is that your number one goal to eclipse what you did 12 months ago? Yeah, without doubt. I set that goal for myself last season and uh, came painfully close to beating that tally, but um, ended up having um, 25 winners again. So yeah, I would definitely um, be aiming to, to beat that and uh, that'd be my, my minimum bar. What about uh, Harry, you've uh, struck up a, a bit of a relationship with uh, Douglas White and Casper Found so far this uh, season. Is that a, a relationship you hope to keep building on and get some better quality rides with those guys? Yeah, certainly, Tom. Um, those are two trainers that seem to be supporting me the most at the moment and um, two yards in really good form. So I really hope I can keep that connection going and, uh, yeah, riding a few winners for them and, and, and hopefully that, that relationship just strengthens. So uh, obviously I'd like to be riding for um, as many trainers as I possibly can and any relationships I can strike up over the up and coming months will be great. Uh, just so you rides on uh, Sunday, yeah, I see you're a master of like and Mr. Ascendancy. Two horses that you, I know you haven't ridden this season. They've been up in Chungfa. But uh, you, you struck up a really good uh, partnership, Master of Luck, at the back end of last season, winning and then running that really good fourth. Do, do you think he's a horse that can go up into Class 4 and win? Yeah, I do, um, Paul. He's a, he, when he won, I was very confident that he'd come out again and, and run a mighty race, which he did, considering he was drawn so wide on that last run. Um, but yeah, I really felt like he's just sort of coming into himself at the end of last season and he's had that one trial, so hopefully that's put him on target now and um, I'd expect him to, re to be running well in this grade and, and I'm sure it can be competitive in Class 4 as well. Looking at some of your other rides, Harry, your first one is in race number two, MM Nebula for Pierre Ong. He's back onto the all-weather, victorious two starts ago. He's had a busy few weeks, but uh, you can't really fault the way he's been going. Do you know too much about him? Um, he's not a horse I've, I've sat on before, but clearly that run at Happy Valley um, on Wednesday was a, a mighty performance, considering he was stuck wide for the whole race. Um, and he's, you know, he's had a couple of quick um, outing so um, he's a horse that looks like he's in great form um, we've got a better draw on Sunday and hopefully he can just continue that rich vein and um, run another good race. Paul asked you about Master of Luck a short time ago did you have a look at the trial up at Chung Far and what did you make of it? Yeah I did have a watch of it obviously it was um, a thousand meters and he um, wouldn't be quite quick enough for that 
um, sort of distance. So I thought it was, um, you know, a good trial. It certainly um, will have got him his fitness in in, in order. And uh, yeah, I'm sure he'd be coming here fit. And, and Francis' horses are doing extremely well this season. So uh, that definitely uh, puts a tick in the box. Harry, another ride you've got uh, for Rick. Chris So is a smart leader. He's been sort of uh, flirting with Class 4 and Class 5. Been a, a wee while between drinks for him. But, uh, look, he, he ran well, I thought, first up. It wasn't bad effort last start. No, that's right. I thought it was a, a really good effort. Um, as you mentioned, he's, he's sort of teetering on the edge of Class 4 and Class 5. So up to Class 4, um, he's got a very light weight on his back and back to a distance at 1,200, which which looks like it suits him really well. So um, he's another horse I'd expect to be running a, a, a decent race, and um, he, he's, he's been consistent of late. And uh, Mr. Ascendancy, uh, Harry, as well, he, he did win last season fresh up as well. I know you've been on him about three times in the past, but not for a little while. Did he, did he catch his trial as well? Yeah, I did have a watch of his trial. I like this horse. I mean, he is a grinder. Um, he's... I see he's got blinkers on for the second time in his career. Um, so that might just eke out a little bit more of him. But, um, yeah, with, with, with blinkers on for the first time in a, in a good while and 1,400 metres, I think it's going to suit him nicely. Um, yeah, he, he can obviously go 1,600 metres, but I think uh, 14 with blinkers looks like it's going to suit him nicely. And with a, a nice trip, I think he likes to be ridden quite patiently. So... Um, hopefully he can run well fresh. Harry, number of those runners that you do ride do have a light weight. Is weight something you have to work on or you're pretty naturally light? I'm fortunate that my weight is pretty good, um, but I do have to work on it naturally. Um, I'd love to be getting out of bed at sort of 115, but unfortunately that's uh, not quite the case. But uh, I just keep keep an eye on it day to day um obviously i have to work to get down to the 116s um but it's something that i'm very happy to do and if you can ride at those sort of lightweights here in hong kong i think it's a, a big advantage and there are plenty that come in either stepping up in in grade um that come in off a lightweight with a big chance so i'm more than happy to do them Harry, we've seen uh, Trent Langlands uh, in town. He's been brought in by the, the Jockey Club to uh, work on your guys' uh, fitness and maybe bring a sort of a new routine to a, a few of you guys. How, how, how have you sort of found the, the sessions that you've had with Trent? Well, I really enjoyed them. Um, something totally different to what I've done before. I mean, I do a lot of circuit training and hit training, but these were really specific exercises which are very specific to riding in a race. So... Um, I thought it was a fantastic um, experience to have with Trent and it'd be great to have him back soon but I think I can speak for all of the guys in the weighing room we really enjoyed those sessions and definitely gave us a different um, perspective and idea to, to training and what, what different muscles to what groups to work so it was really good and um, yeah we welcome any sort of help like that we can get. Uh, on a personal level, Hong Kong's not for everyone. Have, have you settled in well here? Do you enjoy Hong Kong and do you enjoy the nightlife and uh, getting out and about away from the races? Yeah, I have, Paul. Um, I think what's great coming here is that um, even though we are naturally busy trying to get rides, secure rides and galloping in the morning or barrier trials, I am a lot quieter here than I would be if I was riding in the UK where I'd be riding seven days a week um driving up and down the country day in day out so i like the lifestyle here with racing two days a week um there's some fantastic restaurants and uh, plenty to do and i'm definitely enjoying hong kong life um as i say it's, it's totally different to anywhere i've been before but uh i've really enjoyed it to date the jockeys all have a different outlet to, to chill out. Uh, example, Antoine goes rock climbing. A lot of the boys play golf. What does Harry Bentley do to, to get some downtime and get away from racing for a bit? Well, golf is definitely something on my radar. I mean, I, I love the game as difficult and frustrating as it is. Um, and I've just tried to be playing as much as I can of late. Um, not easy always to get on the course, but um, that's definitely one of my hobbies um another one of just my routine day in day out is going to the gym i mean 
all of us will structure our days around that because you need to be as fit as you possibly can here. So that's a regular day. Um, yeah, I play a bit of tennis or a bit of squash if I can. But um, yeah, all of those things seem to focus a little bit around sport or exercise. What about uh, Harry trying to get rides here in Hong Kong? We know you, don't, you guys don't have the managers, they're not mm -hmm. permitted here, mm -hmm. but securing rides and keeping those rides and then the frustration sometimes of getting dragged off those horses that you've had an association with. Yeah, that's right, Tom. I mean, it's um, a challenge um, mentally, to be honest, because there are going to be times where you either think you should be riding a horse again or um, you think you've secured it and then it turns out that someone else has got the ride. So these knockbacks do happen um, in any sport. That is the case, probably more so here as a jockey in Hong Kong. But um, I think it's something I've learned to take on the chin and you can't take personally because there will be times where you'd have to do that to another jockey or another fellow, fellow colleague. So it's swings and roundabouts. Um, and I think I've just learned that um, it's not personal. It really is just a matter of business. And you have to move on and look for those future opportunities as quick as you can. Uh, you obviously spent a lot of time in Qatar as well, um, Harry, six-time champion jockey over there. You're now in Hong Kong. What's, what's future plans for you? Do you see yourself here long term or uh, at some stage will you go back to the UK? Uh, what, what, what's, uh, what's life in store for you? Well, obviously, um, you never know what's around the corner, but I'm very set on making Hong Kong home for as long as I possibly can. Um, I alluded to to you previously in, in another question that I do enjoy life here and I enjoy the racing and the way that the jockey club operates. I think it's extremely professional and um, any jockey would want to be riding and working in a jurisdiction like this. So um, Hong Kong, I hope, will be home successfully for me for as long as possible. And um, who knows what the future holds? But um, as long as I can keep performing and getting the opportunities, then uh, this will be where I am. We've certainly started out the season to make a real fist of it for the remaining race meetings, of which, Harry, there's plenty of them. But we certainly do appreciate your time here on Racing to Win and best of luck out there at Shartin on Sunday. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. There he is, uh, Harry Bentley, uh, talking through life in Hong Kong and those full rides that he is going to be aboard. Off to a break here on Racing to Win, back to look at a very, very good race number eight right after this. This is Racing to Win. Harry Bentley has left us. So we're on to part two now and uh, we're going to kick off the second part as we usually do, Paul, with a last run reminder and it's a horse that David Hayes threw out a few weeks ago as a horse to follow and you've joined the chorus. I definitely have, yeah. This horse uh, ran three seconds at his uh, first campaign here. Uh, this was the, the last run and this is the last meeting of the season. There was a bit of rain around but the horse has performed pretty well on uh, good tracks as well. You can see him tailed off there. Now they did go pretty quick so he was a little bit flattered but he still made up some amazing ground on that wet track and you can see him coming down the outside here and really finishing off this race strongly. So I thought it was a really good run from uh, Global Harmony. He's since come out and trialled really nicely so he looks like he's brought that form into this season. And uh, look, the further the better there. And he did one over 1,300 metres at Sandown when he was called Pagan. But uh, here, I think he uh, looks ideal here starting off here in uh, this season. He looks good. He is a race 10 at number eight. Global Harmony is his name for the last run. Reminder, the focus now is on the 10 races. We're going to preview one of them in depth as we have a look at the meeting details for Sha Tin on Sunday. 10 races, normal start time of one o'clock for the first and it's dual course racing with six on the A-course turf and four on the all weather. One o'clock, but the feature race is the Enchai Trophy. Race number eight, good quality field, class two over the 1400 metres. It gets underway at 4.35 Hong Kong time. Keefe at the top of the book, resuming with the tongue tie on for the first time. The Golden Scenery, he's having his third run back for the season. Sorvest has a very good second up record. Mr Ascendancy goes without the cheek pieces, but the blinkers go back on. Nimble Nimbus is resuming, dancing code. 
He's a horse having his first start in Class 2, as is Supreme Lucky. And Sweet Encounters, one for one first up. And we haven't seen him since the 1st of July, where he raced over 2,000 metres. There is the speed map, Tom. Sylvester leads and Keefe's doing it tough. Yeah, so Frankie Law's got to three in the race and Sylvester's one of those. He had a, a good to trail last a time out, but wasn't able to uh, finish. And to Keefe, obviously, is a, a stable mate. So drawn in barrier at number seven. And uh, then you've got uh, Supreme Lucky there. And uh, Purton was able to uh, fire him out of the gates and be very prominent last uh, time out. Mr. Ascendancy. Uh, Dance and code, Paul, likely to get back in the, the second half of the field? Yeah, I think so. Look, uh, he is uh, up in trip here, but he, he should get himself into a nice enough position. I think, I think with a smallish field, everyone's going to get their chance. It's his dancing code that we're going to focus on, though. We sent the work experience kit out to Shantin this morning to talk to Casper Founds. Casper dancing code, that was such an impressive first up win. Yes, uh, nice horse. I think he's, uh, you know, going to appreciate the step up to 1400 at Shartin now. He's, he's done well for us in the, in, the, in the handful of starts that he's had. And obviously now we're up in class mark, so it's, you know, when you get to class two in Hong Kong, it's pretty serious uh, stuff. And you have found a very strong class two race to, to debut in. 100%. You know, you got horses like Golden Scenery, uh, Find My Love, Supreme Lucky, all nice up and coming horses that that are in current form, you know. But so is my guy, he's in good nick, um, presents well, and I think uh, the step up and the extra following will, will he'll, he'll eat that up. He has raced at Sha Tin previously. His racing style would suggest the big track is going to be right up his alley for more wins here. Yeah, I think so, you know. He's a type of horse which I, I feel could probably get up to a mile, but it's a nice, nice race to, to step him up into. And, uh, Number one, we're going to see whether he can handle the class rise. And uh, if he does, well, he, we'll have a bit of fun with him. Great start to the season. Ten wins already. You are happy with how that's progressing? Yeah, it's going good. You know, we, we plan for a good start and try to have a big season all the way through. So hopefully we can continue to do that. It's, you know, it's, it's always tough over here in Hong Kong uh, in a handicap system. But the horses are looking well and they're racing well. And, you know, long may it continue. There he is, Casper Founds, Paul, as we have a look at what uh, Dancing Code has done with the graphic on the screen right now. That was such an awesome win at Happy Valley. It was. He's unbeaten there at the Valley now, two from two. You can see he hasn't won at Shartan, but he's run a couple of close-up seconds. And, uh, I, look, I've got no worries about Shartan for him. He comes in with a nice racing weight here of 123 as well in this field. I think he's really uh, dangerous here, up to the, the 1,400 metres, as Casper said he's going to, to relish that. You can see Casper uh, uh, there with uh, his uh, season so far. He's had to 10 winners. I think uh, top four rates sitting at around about 46% of his runners at the moment, so they're firing on all cylinders. He's got about 10 or 12 for Paul uh uh, PPG's rated 52 in a stable as well that we, we get to see. Yeah, so he's got he's got plenty of ammunition there. Just looking at his uh, horses here, I mean, Charming Steed's consistent. The Killer Instinct was a massive run last time. He's wide all the way. He managed to win. Dancing Code's obviously the best. And Viva Chaleur has run pretty well in a recent trial. He's had the old snip too, is Viva Chaleur. Ooh. Poor old Viva Shalou. We move on from Casper's runners now to the Golden Scenery. Uh, Tom, he's run third here in the Celebration Cup last time. He's bounced back to racing with some of some vengeance, I guess. Some the way he was going at the end of last season, you thought, well, where's he at? Yeah, he, he didn't win a race at all last season. He had plenty of thirds and fourths and a second and a few fifths and a few eighths as well. So he'd been sort of round about without winning. And then you just see he's been shaken up here when uh, the horse rounders outside uh, was uh, moving forward. That was encountered, of course. Uh, healthy, happy, was able to uh, get a, a cheap lead in front and uh, kick off that. He looked to be under a fair bit of pressure, Paul, but he, he did respond to that to uh, to run a handy third, only beating a length and a half. It was a good run because, as you say, they went super slow in this particular race so he did make up a, a bit of ground there uh, late so yeah a nice run the only thing that put me off with him and I haven't been a fan of the horses he's just got to give away a bit of weight to some of these young up-and-coming horses coming through and he was going from 115 there on the, the minimum to, to to 134 this time round. so it is going to make it uh, tougher but uh, he's a horse that does thrive course and distance and that is the golden scenery we move on uh, now Tom to our next replay which features the golden scenery winning this race or vest 10th, but has won a couple of times second up. Find My Love's just holding his form so well, isn't he? 
Keith Young's done a great job with him as to his trainer, uh, Manfred Mann, had been very consistent. He, w he was no match for the golden scenery uh, this time round. I thought he pretty much had every chance uh, in the, the run. Here he is second up. Um, he has failed second up, Paul, but that was probably early on in his career when he hadn't quite acclimatised here. Yeah, exactly. And as uh, Mark said, look, the horse has really found a bit of form um, sort of the back end of uh, last season as well. Uh, find my love. So uh, we'll see how he goes. I, look, I think he'll tighten up for that run Paul's as well. good with Super Sunny Singh there too. Yeah, yeah. he's indeed. He was a great winning last start. Now, supreme lucky, Paul. We heard from Casper around the one coming up in the grade from his stable, Dancing Code. This horse is also, and like Dancing Code, looks a very, very promising horse. He does. Look, he comes with 121. You can see him pinging out the gate, and he was going to be caught wide. So he, he actually went to the front here, did supreme lucky. Now, there is a bit of pace in this race of Sylvester, so I don't think you and Keithy as well. So I don't think he's going to get to the front. But in saying that, he should get a nice run just in behind. It was worth just highlighting the, the start there, because sometimes he has not been the, the quickest and cleanest out of the gates. But uh, Purton was the man to uh, get him stoked up and uh, across the face of the field, because he, he has been known to uh, to miss it. And uh, once he found the, the front, he was able to uh, cling on, because compassion uh, spirit it never gave it away over the, the final stages um, so it was a it was a handy win from him and going up in grade with a, a light weight so Zach looking to get down to uh, to 121 so he's, he's keen to stick with the horse he is indeed and uh, that was on the opening day Tom that race that was race number nine on the first day Danny obviously wanted to get some more miles into the legs because he sent him back to the trials. Yeah, he did. Um, now, he trialled up uh, quite well in this trial, I thought. Uh, did uh, Supreme Lucky, and you can see Nimble Nimbus uh, in this uh, trial also. And he's not the, the worst. Maybe he's looking for a little bit further, Paul, maybe than 1,400 metres, uh, Nimble Nimbus. Uh, but uh, he was able to run down this uh, leader was uh, Supreme Lucky. Yeah, he was, wasn't he? Now, Nimble Nimbus has had four wins, Happy Valley, just the one at Shartan. So I think he, he, you know, back to Happy Valley, I'd be more interested about him. Now Keefe, Paul, he's somewhat at the crossroads, mm. do you think? He started out his career so well, he's won two from 13, but his last two starts he's finished down the track, he's had two trials, the second one was slightly better than the first, but neither of them looked very impressive, did they? No, they didn't, and he's got to give weight away to all these horses. They're putting a tongue tie on him for the first time, so maybe there's a little issue there, but Barrier 7's a bit tricky with all this pace underneath him. I know his uh, stable mate Sylvester's drawn four, and he likes to lead, so it's the tactics of what the stable were going to do, but he, I think he could be in for a bit of a tough run. And he ran fourth in a, a derby, and he's been around yeah. good horses like that, but um, form went very much south, so they'd be hoping for an improved showing from him that he can get back to that sort of level that he was sort of this time last season. Mr Ascendancy, Tom, we heard from Harry in the first part of the show and his thoughts about Mr Ascendancy. What's your and Paul's thoughts? Yeah, I think he's uh, trialled up quite well, this horse. Uh, Mr Ascendancy, uh, blinkers are going back on, cheek pieces are off. Harry Bentley and uh, Ricky Yu combining. He's had two trials. Now, he uh, did win Fresh Paul off a rating of 77. He's still a bit higher than that at the moment, 89. Yeah, so he's had a, sort of a, a career, sort of a high for him, or, a, you know, way above his winning. But the best time to catch him is Fresh. He's drawn nicely in barrier number three. The blinker's back on, so... He'd be, he'd be quite forward for a good run. I didn't quite get him in because I think this is quite a tough mm. little field though. Tough but a very good field. And yeah, yeah. Who did you narrow down to the top four eventually? Well, I really like Dancing Code's win and I think he can go on with it this season, this horse. So I think he can win Dancing Code. Find My Love is just so consistent. Uh, Supreme Lucky, look, he just won last start and he's got to come up in grade. He's got Zach aboard from a from a uh, low draw, barrier number five, but he can be a bit iffy at the start. And Sweet Encounter did win uh, his debut run here in Hong Kong. He'll get back. So if they do overcook it a bit in front, he's the one that I think will be running on the strongest. Eight, six, nine, ten. Yeah, I think this race is between eight and nine here, a Dancing Code and Supreme Lucky, but Dancing Code up to the 1,400 metres uh, looks absolutely ideal for him and uh, no concerns uh, held with uh, him returning to uh, Shart and either off what was a very impressive win at Happy Valley last time out. Supreme Lucky goes in, he's got a, a lighter weight this time, had to carry the, the maximum last start, he's only got 121 here. Find my love, very hard to leave him out and Sweet Encounter was slow away and then got hampered over the 2,000 uh, metres, but of course did win first up here in Hong Kong and he's had uh, a trial up at Chung Fa, where is it? Tad slow away, and he was pretty much at the rear throughout. So 8, 9, 6 and 10. It's a popular first four from the boys in the last race of the day. So that is race number eight that we have focused on. There's 10 races, Paul. Who's the best? I'm going to go with Dancing Coat. I just think that he's uh, a nice young progressive horse and uh, it was a very good win from... Uh, uh, from him last time we, when, when we saw that uh, winning at uh, Happy Valley. He can come to Sha Tin now. 
and I think he can win. Let's have a look at that, just uh, that race once again. You can see him, he was well back, and he wasn't going to win here, uh, and he managed to get him to slide his way through, and once he got balanced up, came up, he won a little bit cheekily, I thought. You can see him, uh, Vincent was just sort of uh, out there, he just sort of... Um, could have won by a bit more, I think, so he can go on with it. Uh, Dan Attack. Now, Dan Attack pulled up lame at his last start. He had three starts. He'd been a horse that had worked really well, but he's, there were obviously some issues last season. He's had two trials uh, this season, and I think he's, well, he has gone well on both of them, I think, so uh, he should be a bit of a price, Matthew Chadwick aboard Dan Attack. We'll do the play in the last as well with Magnac, excellent fighter, and the horse I highlighted earlier, which was Global Harmony, 248, the QQP. Best of me is excellent fighter now. If there is some rain about, and they are talking rain on Sunday, that would worry me a little bit because he hasn't been able to win on those wet tracks at the back end of last season, but he has trialled well. Uh, value comes up in race nine, number seven. You're my everything, Tony Cruz and Matthew Chadwick. Uh, and uh, here he is uh, last uh, time out. Uh, You're my everything, uh, finish off, finishing off quite nicely over the, the final stages. This was at 1,400 metres behind Superb Boy, who uh, goes around on the programme as uh, well. He was ridden along off the, the back straight, and you can see he's not really going anywhere here sort of with 200 150 to go but the last little bit he did his best work late he's up to 1600 meters and he did win over 1600 meters in the uk i think he's been crying out for it the play happy together superb boy and you're my everything race nine one two and seven Best bet, race six, number one, Flying Dragon. Hugh Bowman, Dennis Ship. couple more strides, he wins last time. Three-time winner, course and distance, and a winner second up. As is Captain Wynn, he's done his best racing so far. Second up, he has been costly, but we'll stick with tried and true formula with him. And the play, race six, one, six and 11, Flying Dragon, Brave Witness and Red Desert. Diary coming up on screen for the next seven days with Sha Tin on Sunday. Now, it's an early start at Happy Valley on Wednesday night, so Trackside Live from 6.40 and then Sha Tin on the 14th. That has been Racing to Win, Tom. Shatin Sunday and then Oktoberfest continues. Yeah, it does. I think it actually might have said you're my everything one in the UK, one in Australia, of course. But see, hopefully the weather stays away, Paul. Yeah, that's a big, big uh, weather watch this weekend, but uh, should be good. And we'll see you for the first Shatin Sunday at one o'clock.